This is the culmination of years of training. All right, let's see what some of my YouTube recs say. Oh, hey, a double video. Well, it is my favorite tokusatsu, so I might as well. Okay, no, no, no. You know, you know what? We're, we're grabbing the equipment. I am. I am not letting this stand. Uh, let's let's just get l l let's get to this. You can cue the intro. Three, two, one, go. Hey guys, it's Jenny here. Uh, just wanted to make a little bit of an off-scripted video. Um, I'm not sure what the visuals will be like for this. I don't really feel like doing all of the editing for all of this. So we're just gonna do it how it's here, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was is with regards to another YouTube channel that I have been following recently called Symbiosis. And kind of a video that he put out lately is sort of a response to it. Because, so he recently put out a video called In Defense of Kamen Rider W's Ending. And as many of you might know, Kamen Rider W is one of my favorite shows of all time. Like, it even beats out Owl House. And I've talked to, to death about how much I love Owl House. And it's like... The thing that kind of frustrated me about it was the fact that instead of really giving much of a defense, he kind of just is like, no, that's bad, I'm just going to do it better. Which doesn't exactly seem like a defense. It feels like, if, if he had titled it like, rewriting Kamen Rider W's ending, I wouldn't be complaining as much, but I just, I don't, it kind of just rubbed me the wrong way, and so that's why I'm kind of doing my own two cents on this, because like I said, I love Kamen Rider W, and I honestly never really hear anybody complaining about this ending. I mean, I've heard a couple of complaints, and I can understand where people are coming from, but at the same time, like, W, like, the ending isn't really as bad as people puts it out to be. But then again, once again, this is all just my own personal opinion, and I can understand where people are coming from when they say, like, oh no, we don't like the ending. So, let, let's get into that, shall we? So, starting off, there are two aspects that he went into. And first one that he went into was Junkazu. Second one was basically Philip's resurrection. Now, let's get to the latter point in the first place. I don't think that Philip's resurrection is really that bad. I mean, because here's the thing. I personally, and you know, maybe this is just a personal thing for me, but I don't really care too much for downer endings. I, it just always feels so forced whenever it's like trying to put a downer ending in things. One good example is with Spider-Man No Way Home. It's like, you know, everybody else seems to really love this movie, but I've gone on record saying that I really don't, and it just puts a bad taste in my mouth whenever I see that movie, you know? And it just kind of frustrates me. So, so it's like, when it comes down to a downer ending, I'm not a big fan. And that's why I, I think that, like, you know, being able to perk up people's spirits, it definitely works in that. And we get to see in the epilogue, with Shotaro kind of trying to do things on his own, like, we see him struggling, and we see that he does really miss Philip. And it's like, it, it, it definitely works, and it, it, it seems like by the end of the episode, he does start to come into his own, and then that's when Philip comes back. And I, while I don't hate how we have a bit of a downer ending for episode 48, 
I do think that it does feel nice and it does have a bit of a feel good with that final ending shot of just, you know, Shoto and Philip kicking the butt of the energy Dopont together, you know? And honestly, like, that's the main thing about it. And and it's not like Philip's revival came without sacrifice, because Wakana Sonazaki, the last surviving member of the Sonazaki family, basically sacrificed her life to revive her brother. You know, basically giving up a life that she feels that she had squandered to give it to somebody that she feels deserves it more. And honestly, I think that's kind of beautiful, and it's one of the reasons why I really like Philip's resurrection. I think it's pretty cool. Now, on to the second part, which is Junkazu. Now, I understand where people are coming from with him, where he is kind of a boring villain, he's kind of one note, he just kind of shows up out of nowhere and hijacks the plot. However, I want to exposit my own take on this. And it mainly comes in the fact that Junkazu is honestly not very relevant to those final two episodes. Because the final two episodes are more about Shotaro and Philip's relationship. Junkazu is basically there just to, like, tie up some loose ends. Just to finish off things with Museum, introduce Foundation X as, like, this big threat, which unfortunately Toei basically squandered. <sighs> They could have been the next Shocker, guys, but you'd rather just put Shocker in everywhere. Anyways, I, the main thing that I am trying to get at with this is that the villains were never really the point of Kamen Rider W, at least that's as far as what I saw, because the villains were just kind of a means to an end. They were a case of the week. It's kind of like in those detective shows, you know, you have your case, you have the background for those cases, and you see how the characters interact with regards to the case, it was never really about the villain, it was more about the mystery, it was more about the excitement about it, you know? And so, I, I think that just, like, it needed... <sighs> the main thing I think is, like, it needs to just be viewed without really taking Junkazu into account. Besides, the final fight is awesome! I think the Utopia Dopont fight is really cool, the action is superb, and... Honestly, just, it, it works. It works really well. And so, I, I can't really fault the final two episodes, or, well, final three episodes, for kind of having this sort of, for lack of a better term, anticlimactic ending. Because it's not about the villains that really make Kamen Rider W. It's about the story. It's about the characters. And honestly... The characters of Shotaro and Philip do really freaking well in this, you know? Philip's basically dying, and he has to cope with that. And then Shotaro has to cope with the fact that he is going to lose an important loved one, and they both have to essentially process their grief together. And that's kind of an important topic in a lot of media, is kind of processing your grief, kind of realizing that you're about to lose something, or if you have lost something, and I think that's what these final three episodes are, what it's about. And so, I think that's the main crux to this whole thing, and why this is my own personal defense of Kamen Rider W. Now, I want to preface with the fact that I am not attacking Symbiosis, or I'm not trying to attack Symbiosis with this. You know, he's a, just a fellow YouTuber, that only has a three-digit subscriber count, just like me, you know? And, you know, the two of us are just trying to make content, you know, and just have a good time with the things we love. And so, I just want to make it clear out here to Symbiosis, I, I'm not trying to attack you. I am just trying to give my own opinion on this, and I just kind of feel like I needed to get my words out. And honestly, if you should have just not named the video in defense of Kamen Rider W's ending. This is just my own personal opinion. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> I look forward to seeing what the comments look like, uh, because 
that's gonna be a minefield. Um, but then again, ugh, I only have like, what, less than 200 subscribers? I highly doubt that anybody is going to see this video. Or maybe some people are, and maybe that's what, and maybe this controversy is what jets my channel into being super popular and stuff. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but either way, it, I, I just wanted to give this whole thing, and I hope that all of y'all have a fantastic day. Um, I kind of liked doing this sort of unscripted thing. It kind of made me think about the Without Context videos that I've done before, and I might try to do this with another short-form video. Uh, I'm currently working on a long-form video right now, just want to let you guys know, and um, that should be ready in an about a month or two, and I also have plans on doing a Blinks 2 retrospective that I had planned for, uh, that, that I kind of teased during my original Blinks 1 retrospective, but that, that's, that's more on that later. Uh, anyways, I, I think I've talked for long enough, and I've probably dug myself enough of a hole as is, so until next time, shine on, Tieflings and Tiefluts. <laughs>